السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم so inshallah in today's uh, session we will be discussing the ayahs from surah uh, ankabut uh, 19 to 25 uh, before we uh, go into the ayahs a little bit of uh, background about the surah uh, i know those who are following along has gone through this but uh, it's good to recap uh, some of the uh, the background and the period during which these ayahs were revealed and uh, a context uh, behind these ayahs will be helpful uh, for this, inshallah. So if you see Surah Ankabut, as you might have uh, uh, gone through in the previous sessions, that it was uh, revealed in uh, the Meccan period when it was, uh, the severe persecution was taking place. Uh, the Muslim were suffering left and right. There were, uh, I mean, tremendous amount of torment and the, the severe punishments were being, uh, uh, done on them. Then the general question which came uh, among the believers, they were saying that, okay, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in Allah who is the, the, you know, who is controller of everything. Now we have been persecuted. We have been tortured. We have been going through so much pain. When the help of Allah will come? When Allah is going to help us? When Allah is going to take out from this situation? Aren't we the true believers? So this is the this is the kind of uh, tone of the or, or the thoughts the Muslims had at that time, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed this uh, Surah An Kabut. So Surah An Kabut, uh, just to give you a, in a nutshell what it is, and that will inshallah help us in understanding the ayahs what we're going to discuss today. Surah An Kabut, the basically the subject and theme of the uh, surah is uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala starts by saying that you know. If you believe, then there, there will be a test. Don't think that you will say that you believe in Allah and you will not be tested. So Allah made that pretty clear. Okay, when you believe in me, then there will be a test. And then he gives the examples, the examples of Nuh alayhi salam, examples of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And so, for example, in case of Nuh alayhi salam, you, you are talking about seven, eight years of persecution uh, and the difficulties and the people not following you. Look at Nuh alayhi salam. Nu al Islam, 950 years he did. And the same thing uh, in all the other stories, this theme has been repeated that you know you, you are not the only one who are being tested now. All the believers, whoever claim to have the faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were put to test. And the uh, Ambiyas uh, were put to test. The messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were put to test. So that's a very first point. Then the second point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he saved all of them. It's not that Allah tested and when they uh, remain steadfast on his test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not help them. He helped them and he saved all of them. And uh, the last uh, ayah which talk in the Surah An Kabut says that uh, that whoever struggles in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will find a way for him. So this is basically the Surah in a nutshell that if you have Iman, then there will be a test. And you are not the only one to be tested. The previous nations, the previous messengers were also tested. And during this test, Allah will not leave you alone. He will help you. And then whoever goes in this path, Allah will open the ways. And then the surah, the name of the surah and kabut, right? Is it's basically a spider. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this, all this persecution you are seeing, all this kufr you are seeing, all the, the shirk you are seeing around you, the disbelievers, and it looks majestic to you, whatever they have the power and authority on the land, it is nothing but just like a the house of a uh, ankabu, that is the spider. As we see the spider web, how, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, fragile it is, it is easily broken. In the same way, all this shirk and the majestic things, what you're seeing and the power and authority you are having, it's nothing but like that house of an ankabut. Uh, one interesting point I was looking for this uh, the, the about the ankabut. I found this point very interesting that uh, the the thread of the house of the uh, the spider it is uh, like 
one by four thousand thickness of a normal human hair. So it is one by four thousand of a normal human hair. So it is that weak it is, and and we all know we don't need those scientific details, but you can see a room full of all these spider webs, but it hardly takes any time to wipe them out. So this is the context. This is the idea behind uh, this surah. And uh, so now, inshallah, going back to our uh, ayahs for today, uh, it is starting from the 19. So before 19, I need to a little bit quickly recap from the uh, verse number 16. Because that's when the, the, the conversation or the part of the conversation happens. Before this, uh, it is about Nuh alayhi salam. And from ayah 16, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about Ibrahim alayhi salam. He says that when we sent Abraham, uh, when he said to his people, worship Allah and fear him, that is best for you if you should know. Then in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the conversation Ibrahim alayhi salam had with these people. You only worship besides Allah idols and you produce a falsehood. Indeed, those you worship beside Allah do not possess for you the power of power provision. So seek from Allah provision and worship him and be grateful to him. To him you will be returned. So this is the conversation which Ibrahim is having to his people that you believe in these idols. But the real provider is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So worship him and be grateful to him. Then after that, the suddenly the conversation changes from ayah number 18 um, to ayah number uh, 23. This is something like a, like a parenthesis, if you will. So what happens is that, uh, I mean, and, and this, is, this is one more point we can elaborate here, is that the Quran is basically a speech. And when we talk to people, we have one conversation going on and then we can we go to a tangent and we explain some details and we go back to it. We will go to different parts of the stories to put our point forward. So here, after this conversation, uh, which took place in the ayah 17 and 18, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that وَإِن تُكَذِّبُ فَقَدْ كَذَّبَ أُمَمٌ مِّنْ قَبْلِكْ وَمَا عَلَىٰ رَسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ That if you people deny uh, the message, Already nations before you have denied and there is not upon the messenger except that the duty of clear notification. So basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to stress two points here. The, the two fundamental problems the Quraysh had. The people of Mecca, the Mushrikun, they used to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the creator. Their problem was they used to associate uh, others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There were other gods and goddesses. They used to think that they are like the daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they are partners of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have some authority and some powers. So, and you can reach Allah through them. That was one problem. The second big problem was that they don't believe in the hereafter. They don't believe that they, they were like, okay, how come when we will, when we will die and then, uh, you know, we will be, um, you know, nothing basically. We will remain the bones, how we will be alive again. So these are the two things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing those two things. First thing about the Tawheed, it was addressed through the conversation which Ibrahim alayhi salam had with his people. When he was telling his people that how come you worship these idols when they cannot help you with your provisions. All provisions uh, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the provider and you have to worship him alone. Now the second part about the hereafter, that is stressed in these ayahs, uh, which we're going to discuss uh, today. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْ كَيْفَ يُبْدِوا اللَّهُ الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرُ So have they not considered how Allah begins creation and then repeats it? Indeed, that for Allah is easy. So the point here Allah is making is that, okay, you believe that Allah is the creator. You believe that he started the creation, right? And it will be very easy to repeat it. So if somebody starts something and if he has to redo the same thing, it will be easier when compared to the first thing. So that, that was a point here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this that observe, uh, have you not seen it that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala initiate the uh, creation? And some of the examples what we can see uh, around us, if, uh, if you see, I'll give you a couple of examples. There are several of them. One is this, you know, if you observe, you know, how these plants are produced. The seed life cycle, basically. A seed goes into the ground. 
and then a plant comes out and then plants have some seeds and then again that goes down then again new set of plants came this is a life cycle which is going on and again and it is happening through the same earth and what is bringing forth is the water and if you see the water water also have a life cycle if the water gets evaporated and then water gets uh, you know form the clouds and then it comes back comes back as the rain so this is a continuous cycle uh, which is happening around us a miracle is basically taking place around us sometimes you take it for granted yeah we put a seed and the plant is there but how come it it came out uh, and not every seed by the way will give you the plant it's only what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills and there are several example and in um, uh, in surah waqiah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights this point that you know it, it is the it is you who brings forth that plant or it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and same things with the human creation itself you know you you have uh, mother and father fully well but you know you know they they give birth when allah decides so it is not um, on the, the this total control is with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to observe how he creates it and one of the thing for us i mean uh, we observe here and and that kind of uh, fascinating for me is that when you see how in this winter season now you don't have any plants on those trees i mean look in our backyard or the the trees in the parks or wherever you go you don't even see a leaf on them i mean seriously i mean you can't even see a leaf it's just branches dead branches literally dead and then suddenly now is you're about to experience that phenomena amazing miracle which allah brings brings forth through the rain is that you know the life comes out of this earth so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to observe that and the same thing is mentioned in the next ayah and the 20 قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ بَدَأَ الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ اللَّهُ يُنْشِئُ النَّشْأَةَ الْآخِرَةَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ So travel through the land and uh, and observe how he begins the creation then Allah will produce the final creation indeed Allah over all things is competent So basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying observe all these things you know every season you are getting new plants pretty much new leaves new fruits and those seeds fall and new thing you are getting you are observing this phenomena do you think it's difficult for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring you back again so that's kind of an argument which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presenting uh, in this verses about the hereafter so after that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying yu'azzibu man yasha wa yarhamu man yasha wa ilayhi tuqlabun وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ وَمَا لَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ So Allah is saying he punishes whom he wills and has mercy upon whom he wills and to him you will be returned and then and you will not cause failure to Allah upon the earth or in the heaven and you have not other than Allah any protector or any helper So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that do you think that those are partners or associates what you have uh, what you have uh, you know associated with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are they going to help you no they are not going to help you in any way they, you know allah can punish anybody allah can have mercy upon anybody i mean this is this is a very powerful ay i mean in today's world also we see sometimes people depending on on, on the awliya that they are they, there is a wali who is going to take care of them there is somebody in their family who is going to take care of them or they are from certain family uh, then allah will going to take care of them Allah is saying that you azibu man yasha wa yarhamu man yasha wa ilayhi tuqlab that he punishes whom he wills and has mercy upon whom he wills i mean there is nobody who can uh, be a uh, wali or nasir as in the uh, next i say wa ma lakum min dunillahi min wali wala nasir and you have not other than allah any protector or any helper so there is no protector there is no helper who can help us on the day of uh, the judgment it is Uh, everything belongs to allah subhanahu wa taala so that kind of message it is uh, being uh, put forward here in these ayahs and then moving on to the next ayah wal ladina kafaru bi ayatillahi wa liqaihi ulaika yaisu min rahmati wa ulaika lahum azabun alim and the ones who disbelieve in the signs of allah and the meeting with him those who those have despaired of my mercy and they will have a painful punishment after seeing everything around us after seeing the different signs what we experience in our life even then if we deny the meeting with allah subhanahu wa taala then those are the people who will be despaired by the mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala 
and they will be uh, deserving of the painful punishment. So these IELTS uh, 19 to 23 and um, basically, you know, points out to that the second thing they have problem with, it is that uh, the, the hereafter, that the belief in the hereafter. And subhanAllah, this how this earth uh, bring, uh, brings forth the life. And that's a very good example that that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring us back to life again. Okay, so now moving on, uh, we are on the, the 24 ayah now. So this is the con continuation of the conversation. So that's why I kind of went back to uh, from the 16, because uh, 16 and 17 starts the story uh, or the narration of Ibrahim alayhi salam having the conversation with his people. Then that kind of continue now it's saying, Fama kana jawaba qawmi. So, Fama kana jawaba qawmi illa an qaluqtuluhu aw harriquhu fa anjahu allahu minan nar. Inna fi dhalika la ayatil li qawmi yu'minun. So after the argument which Abraham alayhi salam uh, presented uh, to the people, that why are you worshipping these idols, these stones, who are not going to help you. The real provision is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the provider, so worship him alone. Then his people, they basically did not listen to him. The only thing it came out of for them is that kill him or burn him. It's interesting to note that they want Ibrahim alayhi salam to die, but there was a difference of opinion, and the difference was whether to kill him or burn him. And then the people who wanted to set uh, an example for others, they decided to burn him. And Ibn Kasir, he mentions the, that uh, uh, that plot, what they had against Ibrahim alayhi salam. He says that they spent a long time gathering a huge amount of firewood. They built a fence around it. Then they set it ablaze until its flames reached up the sky. So it was a huge gathering of the logs and the firewood and they set it ablaze. And it says that no greater fire had ever been uh, lit before. So that kind of fire it was. Then they went to Ibrahim, seized him, and put him into a catapult. And then they threw him into the fire. So that was a test of Ibrahim salam that he was put into the fire. Then Allah says that, but Allah, uh, that but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him, but Allah made it cool and safe for Ibrahim salam. And it says that he spent several days in it. And after that, he emerged from that, uh, the, 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 if you call a house of fire, and without any harm. So it was an amazing sign. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Indeed, in that are the signs for a people who believe. So if you are a believer, then there are signs. So going back to the original uh, uh, background, what we presented, because these ayahs were revealed at a time when the Muslims were asking, we are going through so much pain because we are being we are we are uh, saying that Allah is one. We are going through so, so much trouble because we are denying the false god. Then why Allah is not helping? So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave an example of the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Look at Ibrahim alayhi salam. He had a conversation. He had a rational argument against his uh, people, but they did not listen to him. And instead, they wanted to set an example and they built this huge uh, the 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 you know house of fire and they put him in it but Allah will save him and there are signs and the sign is that Allah will save you also just like how Ibrahim al -Islam was saved Allah can save you as well and some of the other lessons which we can derive from this uh, story of Ibrahim al -Islam is that that Ibrahim al -Islam did not get succumbed to the family pressure or the community pressure or the country pressure but he followed the true knowledge and the true deen, and then he has stayed, stayed away from the ship. Another example was not only Prophet Ibrahim believed, but he also advised his people to accept the truth. And he uh, had a rational argument with them, explaining to them that what is right and what is wrong. So basically, he was not only he was firm on the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he was also a da'i who was inviting people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he was prepared to suffer horrible punishment like the, fire, the, the by the fire. The, the severest of the punishment at that time, they tried to impose on Ibrahim al-Islam and he was ready to face that. 
for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the fourth lesson is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not left Ibrahim alayhi salam, but he helped uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. So basically what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that when you when we say that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us. And then when we pass through that test, Allah will definitely save us. So these are the ayahs, these are the inna fi zalika layatil liqawmi yu'minun. These are those who believe, they are and there are the signs for those people. Then the last ayah for today, وَقَالَ إِنَّمَا اتَّخَذْتُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْسَانًا مَوَدَّةً مَوَدَّةً بَيْنِكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا ثُمَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُ بَعْضُكُمْ بِبَعْضٍ وَيَلْعَنُ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضٌ وَمَأْوَاكُمُ النَّارِ وَمَا لَكُمْ مِن نَاصِرِينَ and Abraham said, you, you have only taken other than Allah idols as a bond of affection among you in worldly life. Then on the day of resurrection, you will deny one another and curse one another and your refuge will be the fire and you will not have any helpers. So this is the conversation which happened after he came out of the fire. So after seeing that sign, also people did not believe in him. You know, they saw the biggest sign ever, right? You know, they, they had this huge fire and they put this person in him, but he came out without any harm. But they did not listen to Ibrahim al -Islam. Then Ibrahim al -Islam said to them, you have, you have only taken other, other than Allah idols as affection among you in the worldly life. So the reason why you are not believing Allah's, um, the message of Ibrahim al Islam is your affection, your worldly affection, your connections you have within your family, within your community. If I believe the message of Ibrahim, what my family will say, what my community will say, what my people will say, I will be left alone and I will be not among them. You know, I will be boycotted, I will be seen as somebody alien. And all those things were there. So Ibrahim al Islam rightly pointed out that why you don't want to believe in me? after seeing all this because of the affections you have in this worldly life, the connections you have in the worldly life. Your jobs will get impacted, your, uh, your social status get impacted and whatnot. Then Ibrahim al Islam saying that now you have all this connection, but a day will come, then you will deny one another, you will curse one another and you will be refuge, will, will be fire and you will not have any helpers. Today, you have this help as well because of your asbiyat. I mean, the groupism you are following, your community and your cult and whatnot. But a day will come when then you will not be able to save yourself. So in the last ayah, the lesson is basically sometimes this uh, asbiyat or the groupism or the affection you have for the people, that is the one which will lead you away from the truth. That you don't want to accept the truth because what your group will say, what your family will say, you have that pressure. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighting that point also because there are several people among the people of Makkah who, uh, who, whose hearts were inclined towards this uh, new message, but because of this social affiliation and the affections they have for their tribes and for their community, they did not want to accept the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving, uh, telling them through the uh, example of Ibrahim alayhi salam that Okay, now you have all these uh, brothers and fathers and uh, the community members, but a day will come that no, nobody will be there to help you. So, uh, so these are the ayahs for today, 25. Uh, so basically, you know, in a nutshell, uh, if, if you want to summarize this whole discussion, it is basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is a sunnah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will test uh, those who claim to have iman. And during the test, he will not leave you alone. He will not leave the people alone. He will guide them. He will save them. And that's the constant message throughout the Quran. We save the people, you know, the, you know miraculously. You know, Nuh alayhi salam, you know, the, everybody drowned except Nuh alayhi salam and his few people. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was alone, one person who was saved from that, the, the, the fire. A special way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. So in the same way, Allah will save the believers, but there will be tests. You have to go through those tests. Uh, it is as if you know you want to purify yourself, then you need to go through this test. And some of the scholars they give example that you know in order to purify the gold, they they burn it. You know then only the real shine comes. Uh, 
the same example is here uh, for the believers. And from today's uh, context perspective, and there are several lessons, um, uh, especially the, the conversation uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam had that, um, uh, we, you know, the, the social affiliations and everything should not uh, keep us away from following the true path. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will go out of the way and he will, uh, he will save us. So these are the points I had for today. Uh, so inshallah, now we can open for question and answer. Inshallah, the first question. Um, you talked about the similitude of the spider's web with the fragility of everything that exists around us. What advice or nasiya can you give us uh, that we can, you know, adopt, you know, daily in our lives. You know, just a few tips that we can, you know, really put this concept of the fragility of everything around around us being like the spider. What should we be doing more of so that we we more more reminded of this? I mean, sh short answer is basically reading Surah An Kabut because Surah An Kabut, uh, you know, the first ruku especially. Uh, it is talk about this and the, the people who have different kinds of faith and we all go through that and we all have those fears we get afraid uh, seeing the, the 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 power the batil has and the oppression the batil is causing on the muslims throughout the world we don't even find very hardly we find anybody where there is a good situation for the muslims especially in our time we see, we see oppression everywhere so the lesson we need to derive is a lesson from uh, the anbiya alayhi salam the stories of Ibrahim alayhi salam, stories of Nuh alayhi salam, that these were the true stories and, and, it, and it just didn't happen for their time, but it was over and over repeated the same thing. Allah says that we, we destroyed Ad save, and saved the Hud alayhi salam. We destroyed the Samud and we saved Saleh alayhi salam. We, uh, you know, the Ibrahim was saved, the Nuh alayhi salam was saved, the Lut alayhi salam was saved, Shoaib alayhi salam was saved. You name it, everywhere this is a concept that now if we want to remind ourselves through the stories of the prophets that will help us and obviously reading the quran and we all go through up and down of our iman our iman gets we we get overwhelmed with the situations what we see around us but in order to stay strong we need to have a strong connection with the quran and pondering and uh, over the ayahs of the quran uh, i think that those are the things which should help us uh, in, in overcoming, first of all, psychologically, whatever we are experiencing in our times and having our uh, clarity in our mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save the believers no matter in what situation they are now. Jazakallah khair. So you discussed that um, the context of these uh, ayahs is uh, in Makkah where the society was predominantly uh, mushrikun and they did not believe in the hereafter now if we were to compare that society with the society that's evolving around us in the west where there's more and more of a trend that god has less place in society um is there a hereafter isn't there a hereafter you know people are moving away from even thinking about that so if we ponder over the comparisons with the mushrikun of Makkah, what advice is there for the Muslims on the call today? What call of action is there for us that we should do, you know, based on these, um, um, you know, comparison of the situations? Yeah, if we compare ourselves today with the people of Makkah, there are some differences, I would say. Uh, uh, one difference we have is the atheism. Right now, there are a good num number of people who don't even believe in the existence of the God. So apart from that, rest everything matches up uh, with what it is there. And even this concept about atheism, not mentioned here, but in other places in the Quran is mentioned. Here specifically addressing the people of Makkah. So number one challenge is basically, it is, it is among our youth also, and it is the existence of the God, the, the question about that. So we need to handle that and then that should inshallah help us in uh, answering the other things also uh, with relation to the hereafter why do we need to have a hereafter why uh, you know how this uh, 
entire uh, universe around us it is has a certain mechanism certain system it doesn't came uh, in its place on its own it has to be a creator and we have several lectures on it these are i don't want to go into detail but there is this concept about creator of a creator of a creator and of a creator if you co keep going back into this uh, this chain there has to be somebody who is the creator the the creator who started everything because um, you know if i want to just give you a, you know, a summary like if you follow all these Darwin theories and everything, it all, it all brings back to a cell, but then how the cell came into existence. So things like that. So we need to have the rational argument with the people, just like how Ibrahim salam had argument with his people. And then we have to fir be, remain firm on the Tawheed as how Ibrahim salam and the other Ambiya remain firm. So I think in our times, comparison is basically giving the rational arguments and reasoning uh, and taking guidance from the Quran. Jazakallah, Karen. Um, there's a question here. Um, the uh, asker is wanting clarification on why does the Quran sometimes go off tangent every now and again in the middle of a dialogue and, and pick a topic and go off in a different direction? What's the wisdom behind um, you know, going off in, in certain directions? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> number one wisdom, which is very evident from this class itself, is that, you know, when you read a book, uh, if you read like five lines and ten lines, it doesn't make sense because any other book, you need to get, go to the chapter. and you, Unless you read chapter one, you cannot figure out anything in the chapter two. That's a problem. But Quran is not like that. You take any page, you go to any page, it will make sense to you, and you will be able to relate it then definitely you need to have some background of those uh, verses, but you will, you will be able to grasp it. Right now, the ayahs, what we discussed, we were able to understand the concept what Allah is uh, presenting here. Now, with regards to why it goes into different tangents uh, or, or the different conversation, talking about Nuh suddenly going to Ibrahim al-Islam and the story of Ibrahim al-Islam is there in between. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about you know the, the life after death. So Quran is basically is appealing to humans. It is a book for human and it is a speech and uh, it is not a book like a written form. It is a kalam, it is a speech and it addresses uh, based on our emotions. Like how a speaker talks, you know, when, a, when a, any speech is given, they try to put different, uh, you know, whatever the topic they have, they bring different examples. Right now in Ankabu, the topic is basically stay from, stay strong. So then example of Nuh al-Islam, look what happened to Nuh al-Islam, look what happened to Ibrahim al-Islam. So then now we are not going to detail like how many people were saved from the, you know, on the, uh, on the ship of Nuh al-Islam and what were their names and so on and so forth. That would be like any, or, any other ordinary book. But this is a kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and the, the, the wonderful thing I personally observe, just like this class today, that you take any, go to any page, you can basically get the um, you know hidayah from uh, from those verses so that that i would say is the wisdom and why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says that he tried to explain he explains point through different means and the ulama mufassirin said that why the same thing has mentioned through different ways because all humans are different uh, and some of the things appeal to me and some of the other things might appeal to you so it based on the different understanding levels and what uh, affects us. For example, for some people, Jannah affects more. For some people, Jahannam affects more. The fear of Jahannam affects more. So it is a, it is a book for the humans and it is a speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, that's the wisdom behind uh, this format. So we talked about the struggles of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, about Nuh alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam was thrown into the fire. You know, it's a very great struggle. But yet we, as everyday Muslims, you know, have difficulty dealing with our own struggles, which are far smaller uh, in, in nature. What do you think we need to do so that we can deal with our struggles more easily, more successfully, inshallah. Yeah, I mean, with regards to our struggle, I mean, like if you are in a kindergarten, they will not test you with a you know 12th grade question paper. So I think that's kind of test we are. Uh, 
uh, and may, and we have to pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know don't make us a fitna for the, the Zalimun and you know, we should not ask a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we need to understand, I, I think if, uh, from an American perspective, you know, the biggest trial we have and, um, and most of us fail to understand is that Allah is testing us by giving the resources. Allah is give, testing us by giving uh, the wealth Allah is testing this Muslim community by giving the good minds, you know, most of the majority of them are uh, highly intellectual kind of people and their children follow their same path. This is the test. And we think that we are getting this because Allah loves us. And Allah clearly says that, uh, you know, the this material thing has nothing to do with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But somehow we fail to understand that this test. That's what I would be. And in Surah Al-Fajr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, I think when Allah, both places Allah says the Mabtalahu that He is testing. So Allah is testing us with giving the resources, opportunities, and the time and, and the intelligence and whatnot. But if we are busy with our own material life, with our family life, and don't pay attention to it. As Allah says, he will give time uh, to everybody, but when that time over, then you will not find more opportunities. So I think I, from uh, our perspective, I see that it is Allah is providing opportunity. We need to understand whatever the uh, material benefits we have, it is a test from Allah and accordingly we have to deal with it. Because one point here is that, you know, a person who goes uh, through expanding on that. Yes, go ahead. No, no, please continue. Yeah, one point is that, you know, when the person are going through difficulties, like see in other countries, the Muslims are being oppressed and whatnot and going through, they understand that that's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when Allah gives the blessings, we don't understand that it is a blessing and that, that it is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although Allah is testing both by giving somebody and by taking away somebody. So I think that in itself is a biggest challenge for us to understand that this, all these uh, resources are a test from Allah. Yeah, and just expanding on that, sometimes people have said that the test where Allah gives you so much in abundance is a far more difficult test than when Allah puts you in struggles. Um, can you comment on that? No, I, I didn't understood that, can you repeat? When Allah gives you so much wealth or resources, some people have said it's a much more difficult test than when Allah didn't give you very much in the first place. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, the problem in America, here, we can sometimes think of ourselves being in that category. Yes, absolutely. The problem is we fail to recognize the test. And the problem is we are thinking that this is because Allah loves us. All these blessings are because Allah loves us. And the same thing like how in Surah Kahf, the, the conversation between the two people, uh, the, 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 the person with the two gardens, he said that Allah gave me these gardens in this world and in the hereafter when I go, Allah will give me more. And somehow we have the same concept. And you know we have this blessing because Allah loves us. But we fail to even register that all these um, children and mashallah, we have good children in the sense they are uh, intelligent and they have more facilities and capabilities. But as Allah says that if you don't follow the path of Allah, Allah will test us and make a fitna uh, with this only, that the children and the wealth. So I think we need to be very uh, careful about it and we need to understand uh, the severity of this test. We need to understand that this is, first of all, that this is a test from Allah, not just a... Um, Alhamdulillah, I mean, we have to thank Allah for the blessing, but we have to understand that this is a test. Jazakullah khair. Um, the Mushrikun of Makkah um, worshipped idols. And um, if we think about idols today, it, it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing that people are worshipping stone statues or, or statues made of any any material but the term idol can be something more broad and you mentioned worldly affection uh, can fall into that category 
Um, so just so that we are more aware and more conscious of the things that can deviate us from the you know, true worship of Allah, um, can you just recap what some of the things are that we should be looking out for so that we don't fall into any of these mistakes about worshipping false gods? Yeah, I mean, worshipping tabut, right, false god, I mean, right now, as some of the scholars rightly pointed out, the, the false god of today's world is materialism that you know gathering as much as possible uh, and then um, another form is uh, accepting that uh, you know that uh, the people are uh, in charge of uh, making the law that's in uh, also in a form of uh, shirk that you are accepting uh, as a collective body of all the people as the supreme lawmaker or lawgiver um, the first point is uh, really critical from an individual perspective that you know don't make your material positions as your Allah. and and then also entertainment by the way i feel that here uh, as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, uh, have you not seen the one who has taken his uh, uh, i mean his desire as his ilah so sometimes people will make their desire as their uh, ilah and that's also a shirk uh, because uh, they will they just wanted to do what they desire to do. i want to just want to play and just want to play and i just want to watch i just want to watch uh, because that's what i wanted to do so this in itself is there and uh, and the story which i uh, mentioned in the last uh, answering the last question about the uh, surah kahf uh, the man with the two gardens he mentions in the end that i should not have associated anybody with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala although there is no mention of idols or anything he was just saying that all this material uh, well-being, it is because of me, because of my uh, capabilities, my talent and whatnot, uh, my genius, I got this. And if there is a hereafter, Allah will give me more. Then in the end, he said, oh, I should not have associated. What did he associate? He associated himself. He associated that this material well-being is basically is through his own uh, power and because of his own uh, genius and intellectual or whatever you call it. So I think the two things I, we see in our times, in our time, one is uh, materialism, second is, uh, I would say three things, one is materialism, second is entertainment, and the third is this collective form of government. We think that this is, uh, uh, this is also a form of shirk, uh, where we consider that this entire uh, people has the right to choose the law. But it is, uh, according to our religions, Allah is the supreme lawgiver and he is sovereign. Uh, there is no country which is sovereign, but Allah is sovereign, and we are here on this earth as His um, uh, representatives, basically. So th these, all these three things are basically form of shirk, and if we accept this uh, indirectly or directly, we are uh, falling for it. That's that are my thoughts on this. Jazakallah khair. So inshallah, this will be the last question. Um, although the spider web is fragile. Many Muslims are in awe of the designs of the disbelievers. Do you think that this is weak Iman from our part? Yeah, I mean, Iman goes up and down. I mean, as long as uh, we stop working, as long as we are not stopped working from it, it it's, it's okay. I mean, there were instances among the Sahaba too, right? And they some of them fled the battlefields multiple times and some of them they gave up fighting uh, some of them they committed mistakes um, a good example of uh, hatib uh, ta'ala he was one of the person among the battle of badr then at the conquest of makkah he, he 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 was concerned about his family so weakness happens to everybody it's not that you know if we fall short that means like okay now you are out of it but the thing is to remain firm and control yourself, getting back to it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that taib, you know, the, the repenting towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the first quality of the believer. So I think that's where uh, we need to focus on uh, that we need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we know, uh, to, I mean, at least the, the major things in our religion, what needs to be done and what's not to be done, all of us know then we need we need to fulfill those and the, the promises what we make to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to ful, uh, make fulfill those and the, the 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 spider web or the evil mechanisms what the people have around us that 
it is same but it we might feel that it is uh, it is a big thing if you have weak iman but if our iman is strong then we will think them as what they are nothing but a spider's web where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to replace them so we have to work on our uh, iman and closeness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, if we sometimes if you are down that doesn't mean that we are out of it uh, but as long as we are on that path and keep repenting to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i think that's the way to do it allah wa